Up next on the main stage here at the CWL Global Pro League, FaZe Clan take on Ghost Gaming. And of course, FaZe Clan making that recent team change. Uh, no more Clayster on this squad. The first team change in, in what seems like forever. Of course, now playing with former EU United player Gunless. He's been an MVP uh, formerly in the season. Merc, in terms of your expectations for this new look FaZe Clan, what do you think is going to happen? It has to be high, right? A anytime you talk about this roster, you've talked about T3 sort of championships winning. Right. They weren't doing that anymore. You know, a change was sort of needed, something different. They bring on Gunless, who was considered basically top two, top three player in the world at, at a point this year. So sort of the talent ceiling is it, it, just ridiculous on this team, but it doesn't fit like Clayster's play style, right? Yes. Now he sort of takes a new role, right? Who is going to play Clacers? It has to be enabled. Who's going to be that second AR? We were talking about ourselves. So a, a lot of questions that myself have, you know, trying to watch these guys online. There hasn't been much footage, so this will be really the, the first sort of sneak peek at, at this phase team. I think one of the biggest things I, I'm looking for for Gunless is the more consistency for this phase squad in big games in Search and Destroy primarily. Enable's sort of been this one on the phase roster that has sort of fallen back, taking a back seat in a lot of Search and Destroy. He's getting that point seven, which you brought up earlier in the day. That cannot happen anymore. This needs to be a well-rounded roster. They should get it from Gunless. He puts on so much pressure. How many times have we seen Gunless this year put up, what, 12, 13 kills in Search and Destroy? It's going to be exciting to watch. Could Gunless potentially be the, the, the factor to bring FaZe a championship this year, do you think, Melo? Absolutely. I mean, he was uh, arguably a top two, but definitely a top three player. You add that to a team like FaZe, and yeah, they can take a championship, I believe. But Gunless wasn't at Anaheim. I feel like <laughs> it's not that long ago, but I feel like I've been waiting to see Gunless play for so long now. Right, right. And just getting seeing him in a FaZe jersey, I'm kind of getting a little excited. I'm like, this, this could be, this could <laughs> be something <laughs> special. It, it looks weird. It looks strange. It does look strange. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? You're, you're looking, you're like, that's not Clayster. That's Gunless. <laughs> where's, where's his United hat? He traded him for a new one. Uh, Great but, to see him actually wearing a jersey, though. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, he's. Uh, I think he's developed as not only a person, he's kind of just kind of shot to start him almost. And yep. sometimes, that can be really bad for a player sometimes. You don't get that build up and you don't get that kind of consistency that T was talking about that you need. Um, but I, I agree with T. I think the consistency he will bring will be very, very good. Um, and it's just good to see you know, himself there, smiling, happy, ready to go. Just, just for me, I, I just think the biggest question will just come down and search and destroy. Respawns, if they're slaying well, this team should succeed, right? Yeah. Like That's what we've seen all year long. The talent on this team, just attach, zoom up, just saying those names, they're, they're going to be ridiculous. So to me, it just comes down to search and destroy at, at Anaheim. It wasn't that one of their best game types. So we'll see because I felt like Clayster, like he had some big games in SD that that helped them sort of just propel. So. We'll see how, wh where that fits in. I mean, you talk about big games, though. The one that yeah. immediately comes to my mind, if you go back to stage one, was that game against Rise? The game five, right? They phase clutch up in game four, and then Clay does what Clay does. Mr. Game five, if you right. will. Gunless definitely with some big shoes to fill. But on the flip side of the main stage, of course, we have Ghost Gaming. And this is an interesting one for, for me as well, T, because you go back to Anaheim in terms of the pools when they were formerly bittersweet, and they steamrolled through. We were like, whoa, this team just came out of relegation. This is awesome. But then they, they lose to two European teams in bracket play and they end up finishing top 12. Yeah, it, it's really tough to gauge these guys in the pro league right now. I think they definitely have the talent all four of these guys. They really had that fire going back to relegation at Anaheim and throughout that tournament throughout pools. They have that energy and we've seen throughout these groups thus far the teams with the most energy seem to do the best especially on day one and going back to their losses at Anaheim Splice, I'm not going to fault them for that one. Splice, you know, Fair. top two team in the world. Yeah, you, you know, it, that's going to happen eventually, uh, especially against a team that hasn't had the chance to play against them. But but Red Reserve, I feel like they probably should have beat them with the talent on this team. So I guess I'd put them around top eight right now. Well, here's a look at our map set, Momo. Ghost versus FaZe Clan. Anything standing out to you here? Uh, for me, Retail and Breakout, we talked about it in the previous series. You're looking at your MV4s. Who's stepping up? It's Enable. I'll be all eyes on Enable going into this one. I see what, he, what he's bringing to the table. Um, of course, you're going to be looking at how Gunless performs as an individual. But I, I think, again, you know, on the flip side of things, this Ghost gaming squad, that they have to just kind of put that to the back of mind. They definitely. doesn't matter who we're playing it. You know, FaZe, big name. Gunless, big name. Forget about it. You know, just play your own game. They're They've had more time as a team um, to kind of play, so their chemistry should be a little bit better. And uh, I expect this to be very, very close. I know the fans at home, obviously, it's all face, face, face. Don't underestimate this Ghost Gaming squad. No, I'm, I'm excited for this one, of course. As you said, Ghost definitely a team that could come out here and cause a potential upset. And we get our first real look at the new phase clan. The game about to get underway. We can set it down to our casters. It's Maven and Mr. X. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, I think we all have uh, kind of a big question mark with, with FaZe. What, what are we going to get? 
you have to agree this is the most pressure that's been on Gunless in his career. Without a doubt. And he kind of, I mean, to echo some of the stuff the guy said on the desk, it just looked weird. We went to that first shot of him in a phase jersey. I said to you, I was like, it just looks odd. I think you put anyone there and it would look odd because you're talking about a team that's been together two, two and a half years. Just that's putting true. someone else in the jersey, I think is what was so off-putting. You're just, We've seen the same four guys for so damn long. Well, you see the change on Twitter and then you see, you know, the guys talk about it. Obviously, you see the scrim. And it doesn't really kind of set in until you see him there in the jersey that, like, Clay is not on. It's yeah. going to look even weirder when we see Clay on the United. Right. That's going to look even weirder. But uh, coming into game one, I feel like this series made for me goes either one or two ways. I feel like FaZe comes out, they blows the door up for Ghost Gaming, or it's a very close series going all the way to the end. I'm definitely looking at Enable on the side of FaZe, how he adjusts to beating the main in V4. And I'm, a, I'm looking at Gunless as well, because he hasn't played in a while. No, did not play at Anaheim. A lot of pressure on him. I think I saw a tweet from him. He's like, feels kind of odd leaving the players I came up with and now joining this team. He definitely has to feel like in an awkward spot right now. It's interesting, because, yeah, there are a lot of things to look at. But what I'm most curious about is actually kind of the Zuma attached duo. Think back when they were their best at AW. Those two were a nightmare to deal with. Absolutely. Has Zuma being off, you know, the injury and stuff, you got to think that has to affect Tatch. It affects Zuma, clearly. You get a little help with Gunless now in the pressure situations yeah, as far as flying at people with ERADs, with a K-Bar. Uh, I, mean, I, I think Attach and Zuma can improve drastically from this. Well, even with Zuma with his little injury, you could make the argument that he was playing better than Attach. I really think if you're going to kind of make that argument, I really want to see what Attach comes out. And I maybe you know a guy like Gunless who can put a little bit more pressure on the opposing team, makes Attach's life a little bit easier. As Attach now getting off to a 3 and one start, it'll be phased up a little bit here early on bridge. Well, as casters, I'm sure fans, we're excited to see these two teams go up against each other. We're now well into game one, trading back and forth on bridge. In 10 seconds, we're going to head to lower street. You see at number four on the mini-map, that's going to be Lama God, already set up at Platt, a crucial, crucial position for this particular hard point. He's got work to do as he's going to be challenged by Zuma here momentarily. He's going to be able to pick him up on plat as we go down to the lower street. This is such a power position for Lama God to hold down. Able to pick up a second one inside. And Atip kind of mentioned it on the desk, kind of echoing his statement. It's like, we've never really seen Lama God play in like a structured team or be that main slayer. He did it at Anaheim. It was key to this team's success, Ghost Gaming. Can he do it again will be the biggest question with them all weekend long. And, you know, back to you were talking about Enable. And, you know, this is a map where you probably miss Clay the most, something like this, where, you know, what he would bring with an NV4. Is this somewhere where maybe maybe Mox could get the better of that particular matchup? But Mox right now at least starting a little bit slow. He's one and four. They're going to need the slaying prowess he provides to have a chance against this phase team. Because I think the argument can be made. If you, yes, we think the series could go the distance. We're we're excited for this matchup. But like, if you go just head to head match up each player against each other, if you're just talking like overall oh. talent, you pick everybody on face. Oh, without a doubt. See some players actually snuck behind Zuma here. It's a very interesting route that Mox has taken to get in position. FaZe doesn't know he's there. He's able to get one. This could be a big play from Mox. They need to get him out of the hard point. But they also need to watch his back. And you see Zuma, he's going to fly and able to pick up one. But Ghost Gaming has the break. They have the pinch from both sides. It's a big play there by Mox. And this is where they, they come back into things. You know, uh, we saw in the first series, right? It started to get a, an early lead. Uh, we would see for Enigma 6. They then kind of rebounded. They had Cathedral right in the broken building and blew the game wide open. Ghost doing a solid job here of just keeping themselves alive in this. And Lacefield just doing the phase members naughty. That's three in a row. Great movement there around the tank to get, uh, you know, kind of a, the advantage in each of those gunfights. Yeah, now you got Lacefield on streaks, Spacely on streaks, and Llama God as well. And Lacefield going to push forward. They're trying to get control of Broken. And you see the number one on the minimap, Mox, gets into that position all the way in the back again. He's doing a fantastic job for this Ghost Gaming team. Exactly. It's back-to-back -back hard points where he's able to slip in from behind. He gets the first kill. FaZe will clear it out. They have the spawns now. This is a chance for FaZe to answer right back. A back-and-forth game one so far between Ghost Gaming and FaZe Clan. Lacefield tagging up Zuma from behind. A good opportunity here to break. But as he gets taken out, it's going to be, a, what, a 3v2? They still have advantage here to try and push through. And it's just a little adjustment that Enable's going to have to make, right, being kind of that slower AR player. He's all the way in the back stairs, the position you see Mox in now. Instead of watching, you know, Zuma's back, watching underpass, he's looking inside of the hard point. Zuma gets shot in the back. The entire hold falls apart for face. And that's why I think, yeah, yes, obviously some of our more skilled players are NV4 players. But I think if you talk to any of them, the most important thing for that role is positioning. And I just don't think that's something you necessarily can learn overnight. We know no. we know Enable has run the MV4 on and off. Him and Clay were swapping back and forth at times. He has experience doing it, but 
I, I agree. It may, be, may take them a little bit of time to get a rhythm. And, and here's an odd thing. You see Gunless right now, 3-7, and seven, getting off to a slow start. He's running the NV4 in this map. You got you know, Attach and Zuma with the K-Bar in their hand pushing forward. So the guy's wondering, you know, who's going to be that secondary AR? Why would you make it gunless? That just makes zero sense. He's been a fantastic player with the K-Bar and the E-Rad in his hand all year long. If somebody was going to change, it shouldn't have been gunless. But it's it's so early. It's the first time we're getting a look at him. Yeah, this is a map where I, I have no problem with him running AR. We know he's been very, very good with it. He has actually has some of the craziest kills on this map with a K-Bar at range that I've seen of any pro, pro player. But so. why run the NV4 then? Ah, it is a map where I think you can get away get away with two NV4s. If somebody's going to do it, I mean, uh, I, I zoom mean, and attach. It doesn't exactly fit their style. I'd right. I, well, you see Gunless switch over to the K-Bar right now. It's five and nine. But I, I do think I agree with you. You can run. I, I, I've even seen, you know, three NV4s on this map. But I think with Gunless, with how good of a player he is, he should be the last one that's making sacrifices, you know, just in terms of changing guns. And look, switches over to the K-Bar, picks up three kills right in the hotel hallway. Now, working towards streaks. And just to speak a little bit about Gunless, maybe people that, uh, didn't follow his kind of explosion onto the scene this year, why we talked about this being so much pressure on him, I think he just spent the entire year with the United. They kind of had a chip on their shoulder. The expectations weren't high. When they finally, I, I think when finally in everybody's head, United was a top team, they are favorites to win events. That's like right when things fell apart, right? Like it, it took a while to convince people. Even after they performed so well at Atlanta, there were still doubters for them going into Dallas. Right now, though, when you get on this phase team, the expectations are so high. You heard Merck talking about it. He has to perform, and he has to perform right away. And I think also when, you know, Gunless is on United and we're talking about how talented of a player he is, as soon as they start to lose, kind of wonder, like, what else is out there, right? You know, you, have, you speak to some of these other teams, you know, like uh, Luminosity and FaZe and, you know, other teams that were kind of in the mix and Envious. And if you're an up-and-coming player, like, you look at those organizations and those players, like, those are the people you aspire to be. So to have an opportunity to play with them, it's a huge thing that Gunless probably wanted to get accomplished. He gets it done. And then on the other side of it with Ghost, it's just a, it's a it's a very different story in the sense that, in a way, it's some leftovers, right? Uh, Spacely's been in that situation before. Lacefield then getting off a of cloud nine. The players that feel they have a lot of t a lot to prove, that feel they belong in the Global Pro League and have now have earned their spot in, they got to step it up. I mean, not even that. It's you know Mox starting this team, and then right before the qualifier, Parasite leaves. He joins EG. Exotic leaves. He joins Cloud Nine. You know, putting this Ghost Gaming team as it is now together last minute and they're able to qualify for the global pro league and they're a scary team because you don't really know how to game plan against them because they don't have like one guy who goes off right they're going to kind of do it by committee you know four very smart players they can get a little shifty make some interesting plays it's a very difficult team to go up against i think a team definitely scares teams like phase and enigma six and we saw how it would work for you United as far as having the chip on your shoulder feeling you belong feeling you need to prove it maybe feeling like you you have more to prove than your opposition I think you feel that way if you're Ghost Gaming for sure. The question is, can they turn that that momentum, that uh, that energy into Ws? Now we're going to go from the lower street over towards Cathedral. <laughs> this Scarab's been chasing one player around forever. Your little cat and mouse. Not there. going to be able to get anything. Now it's going to be Faze spawning all the way out. Ghost Gaming with another good start here on Cathedral. Let's see if they're able to hold it down. And you know, we talked about Faze a little bit and uh, what they could possibly do with Gunless on the roster. I don't think there's a way this team like gets worse, so to speak. I mean, this is a pretty consistent, you know, top three, top four team all year long. They just made this move because they want to win championships. And I yeah. think now, but now that puts a lot of pressure on everybody, right? Because you made this move to win championships. Now you got to bring one home. And you got to feel, you know, enable a big part of orchestrating this. The guy's got more, you know, console FPS experience than just about everyone still competing. You know, on Hot Mike, he was talking about the fact he's been, you know, he's been competing for a decade. He's been on so many different organizations across multiple titles. Someone I think you kind of need to trust the opinion and instincts of. If he thinks they're going to improve, you got to have a little faith in him. And I know uh, he wasn't really looked at as the leader per se of this phase team, right? It was a lot of you know, people saying Clayster's the leader of this squad, but you know, Enable has had so much experience in first-person shooters that I, I feel like he could easily take that role. Well, he said last night, he said that that was the opinion of, uh, you know, if you look at Twitter and Reddit, it's that the Clay was the, the lead guy, but he's like, it wasn't it wasn't that lopsided like that. Like, I, I, in a lot of ways, I was the captain and leader of that team. And now he's completely taken it over, and they are enjoying a 40-point advantage right now, but with just under that remaining here in the destroyed building, FaZe looking to break through. And it just seems like they've never been able to put enough separation between themselves and Ghost. Ghost has just kept on fighting. They've been in this from the get-go. 
They're still in striking distance here to take control of the game. And Naval is going to get taken out inside the hard point. That's going to allow Spacely to get in last 15 or so seconds. This game is definitely not done. I know Ghost Gaming holding on here to destroyed building. They can take the rest of this time. They'll go into the hotel hallway like 197 to 219, which it's very doable. They can, they have to force that bridge and then maybe earn some streaks here in hotel hallway to have a shot. Are you are you surprised at all? It's close when you know, we know how important the NV4 player is on a map like this. When you when you have Mox severely negative and you have Enable going off at 25 and 16, and they're still only trailing by 20. I, I think I, I am kind of impressed from what you see from FaZe and also kind of shocked from the standpoint that you know, expected Mox to play a little bit better than on the side of FaZe. You know, you're not getting a great game out of Gunless, not getting a great game out of Zuma, but you're still able to have a lead. But now it's Ghost Gaming in control of the hotel hallway. This could be huge. And you have Spacely getting those streaks I was talking about. Just 50 away from the bombardment. That could be the difference in this game. They're mounting the comeback now. 20 seconds remaining in Hotel Hallway. The deficit about to be erased. We're going to get a lead change now back to Ghost Gaming and a game one hard point that looks to be going down to the final moments. A break for a phase, but it's yeah, pretty late in it as there's 10 seconds remaining. And now we're going to get back the bridge. Who's going to go big for their side? If you're Ghost Gaming, you give up that time Hotel Hallway. You try and set up here for bridge. You try and end it here because Mox getting very close to the camo. You have the streaks on Spacely, and look at this. Tatch, he's going to pop reactive. Gets nothing for it right now. Here comes the streaks. It's going to be Spacely getting one. Lacefield with another. Attach able to survive one. Not going to survive a second. And it'll be Ghost Gaming getting control of the hard point. Everybody on phase spawning out. This is great for Ghost. They're spreading back the bridge, trying to win this. But it's a lead now for Ghost. About to crack the 240 mark. You only have one more attack here for FaZe Clan. Three players up. It's Gunless high over the wall, trying to find an angle. It's reactive armor that meets him. Lacefield taking off his head. Now five points away is Ghost. They've cleared it. Enable the last man up. He's going to get cut down at Ghost Gaming. Take game one. They're on their feet. And they hit FaZe Clan in the opening of this best of five. It's a big win for Ghost Gaming. Now hard point, not this team's strength. They're able to come out with a big comeback there over FaZe Clan and take game number one. FaZe Clan obviously comes in with a ton of pressure, making this roster move, picking up Gunless. Ghost Gaming, you know, they come into this series, they know that if they're able to win this series against FaZe, they have a chance to finish first. Well, it's a nice draw for them, right? You saw the stat, I believe, coming into this. They were three and six in Hardpoint at Anaheim. Those three wins, though, all came on retaliation. So at least you get one of your stronger hard points here to kick off the series. But wow, what a what a win there to just, you know, if you're gunless, welcome back. <laughs> you, you don't have the, the best game to get going, but uh, maybe shake it off a little bit of nerves. Hard, I, I yeah. played month, month and a half. Yeah, I mean, nerves just it's so different playing, you know, online, whether you're scrims or eights and then coming here to an event like this. I think it's just a, I, it's obviously not a different level of competition because it's the same teams, but there's just a little bit more to it. I feel like it's just an odd thing to explain because it's the same teams, you're doing the same thing, but there's just a lot more importance on it, a lot more energy in the room. It's a much different atmosphere. Well, speaking about these teams, we did have a chance before this weekend to talk to the guys about this particular matchup. Let's hear their thoughts. Ghost was a new team in Anaheim. They uh, came out and surprised us. They were playing really well, came out with the fire. They ended up first in the pool that we were in. So they're definitely a good team. Can't take them lightly. We played FaZe at Anaheim and we were able to take them out. What that did for our team going into this event and sticking to that game plan and even with the addition of Gunless is just trying to shut down their key players like Enable. If you get him having a bad game, it really causes them to get flustered and then it affects like a snowball effect. I know Mike, uh, personally, I'm really good friends with Mike, so you know I know how bad he wants it, and I could kind of see that transforming into his team. Like, you could tell that they all really, really want it, and that, that's what it comes down to. When, when people really want it and really want to play and really want to win, if they put in the work, it's going to show. They're going to be a lot different now. I think they'll be a lot tougher than they were at Anaheim. The top 16 is not what they should have placed. We're confident in our search and destroy versus them. It's all about just taking a respawn off them. It's kind of still baffling to me that like that actually like that whole happened like two weeks of practice they went in just kind of just destroyed everyone and then it was like nothing. With the addition of Gunless, what he does for the new phase lineup, I think that he has the ability to have some insane games where he's just getting streaky and getting hot. Gunless is faster paced. Uh, Clay's more of a slower paced player. Gunless is going to bring consistent slaying power as well as speed. That's going to put a lot more pressure on us. 
that's probably the thing that helps them the most, is that the fact that nobody knows what they're gonna do, nobody knows their breakoffs, SMDs, stuff like that. They're a brand new team. Well, you hear the thoughts from both sides of this. You know, Gunless, maybe the, the speed he brings to this team uh, won't help as much on a map like Retaliation, but getting into Search and Destroy, I know he's had some incredible performances, specifically on Throwback. This is where I think he can likely help the team the most. It's going to be Search. I think he's definitely a dynamic playmaker in Search and Destroy, can open up things for his team. But like the, a lot of the phase guys said, you know, Ghost Gaming, they don't know their opening breakoffs in Search and Destroy. You heard Mox say, you know, we feel pretty confident in our S&D if we're able to get one of the respawns. They've already done that. Now going into game number two, it's a must win for FaZe here. And when you talk about Ghost as well, you know, uh, Spacely on Hot Mike last night, he was talking about the facility they have. Uh, you know, they're getting a team house. They're going to have a personal chef, trainers. And, you know, he was tweeting out photos of them. They, they were up early. They were in the Ghost Gaming offices watching VOD for hours, even if the players, you know, maybe didn't want to. We know not all players are a fan of watching film, but it, it certainly, certainly helps. You got to think maybe, even though there's been some changes with the phase roster, they probably come in knowing what they're up against a, li a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to change everything if you're phased. You're just going to try and, like, move Gunless in, maybe take some of the things that he did on EU United, bring it into your own squad. But it's not going to be like this drastic, you know, night and day type of shift. And I think Gunless, you know, is still, we talk about him a lot, a lot of pressure on this guy. You come almost kind of, it's almost like when an NBA free agent, like, signs, like, a, a monster deal with a new team. You're like, all right, now they got to produce. And then, like, they, they got to show up or else, you know, the fans start going crazy. Like, it's not going to be good. Well, it's not It's not just him. I mean, is there pressure on him? Yeah, but you talk about the other trio. Able that They yeah. orchestrate, you know, getting getting Clay off the team, one of the all-time greatest players. You saw how lopsided fans were. They, they thought United got the better end of the trade, which I, I was kind of surprised. I, I thought yeah, it was pretty 50-50. I, pretty I, I thought, thought it was even. Yeah, yeah. If not, I mean, Gunless is, I, I believe, a better player right now in I W than Clayster is, but everyone was, was everyone was favoring that side. When you have a player, I guess, is liked by Clayster with as much history as Clayster has represented every major organization basically for Call of Duty. Yes, big shoes to fill, so much pressure, and I think it's just it's a trickle down effect. It's not just Gunless; it's on every single member of Phase right now. Oh yeah, and it's got to be in the. Ba I mean, I know when we went to Philly after we dropped Clay and uh, grabbed Damon, there was a ton of pressure on us that event where we basically sat there without Damon and we just kind of looked at each other like, okay, if there was one event we absolutely needed to win, it was this one. Because if you lose this one, then everyone is like, oh man, you guys messed up. Then everyone starts second guessing each other on the team. Like we just needed that as like a reassuring win for confidence. Oh, there are, there are different levels of team changes. There are team changes and like major team changes. When when you take somebody off like a clay, <laughs> that is that is major and it applies pressure in so many ways. But let's see if there are some improvements in search and destroy for this phase team. Gunless, first man up, trophy out. And he's gonna be looking to get this bomb down. Something to note too. Gunless, one of the better players with camo we've seen in the past, not gonna be running camo for this space squad. It'll be Spacely opening up with first blood as Ghost Gaming goes on a flank. Spacely wins the first. Spacely gets a second. Lacefield involved as well. Now Gunless, the new guy, by himself and down. Four-man clean sweep for Ghost Gaming. And that's an easy defuse. When we go into the next round, I just want to cycle through the payloads on the side of face. Because here's another situation again where Gunless is so good with the camo. Like he got to put it in his hands. Looks like he just picked up right where Clay left. I mean, I, I, I guess I'm a little bit surprised to see. Uh, maybe, maybe you know, in scrims and stuff, they, they tried it out. They probably went through trying various tactics here. But, yeah, I mean, I, I guess the only reason I'm surprised is just because how good he's been with it. But then again, do you, do you adapt to the one player coming in, or do you keep with what's sort of worked for your three core players that you've had on phase? Normally, I would say keep with what the core had, as you see Enable getting first blood. But when you add somebody who is the best at something, you make an adjustment around that. Well, and we'll see. That might be something that shifts over the final couple months of the year. We know how much is on the line in this final stretch of the Call of Duty World League for 2017. For those of you joining us all year, thank you. For the new viewers coming into Stage 2, hope you're enjoying the broadcast. We'd love to have you here. You would thank them as well. You wouldn't just thank the people who have been around for a while. You would oh. also thank the people yes. who I'm just got here. I said we love, we love to have them here. We'd want them to stay. Thank you so much. Stick around. Yep, there you go. Order some takeout. Or delivery would make more sense. You tried to order 40 wings last night. $40 worth of wings. Oh, okay. It okay. would have been a lot of wings. Instead, I ate some carrots, crackers, and went to sleep sad healthier option. Ugh. It's usually also the sadder option. It is. Uh, Ghost Gaming. 
going over towards the B bomb side as Spacely has bomb in hand. Probably getting it down right now as Lay Shield's gonna wrap and watch the back and he's got a lot of players coming towards him. The big thing here is him getting at least one kill when they push through. He can't just be picked off. Can't just be picked off and turn this into uh, more advantage for FaZe Clan. He had to give them a chance in this scenario. Shots wild from Spacely as he drops. And uh, <laughs> different sights, but a similar result here from both sides. Just a four-man clean sweep. They come in, mop away the other side, and get a defuse. We'll be tied up at one-to-one. -one. Uh, both teams doing a solid job here on the defensive retakes. Two quick rounds. Can't really get much of anything in terms of you know, learning of you know, what's going to go on the rest of this game in those first two rounds because they're just both heavily lopsided. Yeah, they certainly are. You haven't had any uh, really clutch scenarios develop yet in this game, but it's still early here. If you're just joining us, Ghost Gaming takes the game one hard point by about 20 points, a really back and forth affair. Enable found the first blood on, in the last round when they were on defense. We'll see if he can do the same here. But Gunless and company starting to push up through the mid cut and get control. He will have bomb in hand. It was a quick and early plant. This time they're pushing through. You don't want him to drop this bomb in a deadly position, but he's got his teammates behind him. Narrowly escapes a, a grenade as well. The man advantage, though, disappears for a second before Attach can turn the tides back into FaZe's favor. Yeah, you just see, well, I was going to say all the pressure was put on FaZe there. And you see, it's going to be Ghost Gaming, though, coming over the top. Able to get one more kill. That is the round that FaZe needs to win. Gunless puts all the pressure on. He goes in the back with an E-Rad. Attach picks up two quick kills. You get the man advantage. You cannot get two-piece like that. Llama God with an easy kill here coming over the top, finishing off Gunless. Yeah, that's all Lacefield. I mean, Lacefield gets the two-piece, but then also makes the final player Gunless one shot. Some fantastic shots there from Lacefield. And uh, yeah, Lace has got to keep it on. As much as we were talking about you know, Proto in the last series, Lacefield's a guy that is very, very aggressive on a map like this. He will find lots of first bloods. He will also be first blooded frequently, but uh, his, what the hell? All right, well, first blood goes in favor of FaZe. Uh, it was a team a, kill. Uh, an attempted nade over the top. It's stuck in the back of Zoom. I'm he, not sure exactly what happened there. And it bounced off of him. Uh... Doesn't really make much sense, obviously, not seeing from that POV, so can't give you guys any idea of what happened there. Llama God, though, takes out a Nabal. Every time I, I see a team kill with a nade, and uh, first, I always think back that to that. Champs. Champs was a Nabal and yep. Aix. <laughs> always On, uh, think about that. Solar s &D. Yep. <laughs> that was against, uh, what, TR, right? Yeah. That just always is the first thing that jumps into my mind. One of the, one of the worst team kills in a crucial round of Search and Destroy that I've ever seen. Is that uh is that the biggest team kill? What, what is the what is the biggest team kill I think we've It's that's uh, that's got to be up there. It's got to be up there. I mean, we've had some we've had some crazy ones this year, but I feel like it's happened to like some of the ones that stand out are like a trophy drone killing a teammate or a Centurion, like some of those kind of freak of nature things that happen not not putting a grenade on your teammate's toe. Yeah. It's uh odd at the start of the round. So uh, now we see Zuma wrapping around the corner going to be traded out for both teams. This phase definitely comes out on top in this engagement. It'll be Lacefield, the only one up. Phase, they charge through mid-map. They get control. They win the round. Ghost Gaming, though, still with a round advantage here. You heard, I believe, it was Spacely in the, the video. He said they feel very good about how they match up against this phase roster in Search and Destroy. But this is a very different phase roster. See if Gunless can continue to provide a lift to them in this game mode. Now we'll hop into round six. Offense back for Ghost Gaming. I like this call from Ghost Gaming. Going towards that top side of the map. Usually a lot of the action towards the middle and over towards A. But Spacely fires off some shots. Now the bomb will go down. You see how close FaZe is playing together. Going to try and stack for this retake. Yeah, it looks like they're ready to hit this very quickly. All four players bunched up behind Bar and Spacely, the first to engage. He sees everybody soaring over the top. There's a team kill that actually comes through, and suddenly Llama God by himself in a one versus three. 30 seconds remaining on the plant. Can he go clutch here for his team? It's certainly winnable right now as he wraps around the back. He gets spotted. He gets a free kill there onto Attach. He has FTL to work with. If he gets a slide, maybe somehow a, a miraculous FTL play. Where is he, where is he going after? Uh, he, he's slide. sliding in. He's jumping. He's FTL out so, the front. He's sliding through the mid cut. He was, he was going to die. He was, he was dead He, he would have slid in the silo. They would have had him pinned. In my head, though, whenever I see FTL, I expect some just crazy nonsense to happen in which someone survives some scenario they should never, ever survive. We see that maybe, what? 
once a, once a weekend? Yeah, one, a couple times a year. Not exactly sure that was the, the play we were going to see it happen. I, I get excited for it. You get excited over the small things. I do. I do. That's the reason I'm alive and happy. The, oh. little, the little things. Yeah. Phase forgets the bomb. Seems like the naval will go back and pick it up as Gunless has really picked things up in Search and Destroy. Uh, eight and three with the E-Rad in his hand, just playing a lot more aggressive here. That, that's why we thought he could maybe be the difference between them being a top three team and a top one team to start winning tournaments again. If Search and Destroy, he can come in and make that much of an impact. We know on Respawn, yeah, yes, FaZe can be a little bit up and down, but overall, they're, they're a consistent team. They have too much slaying power not to be. Gunless with a first blood there at nine and three, about to hit double digits, just blowing everybody out in the lobby. This is why you picked the guy up, man. And this is a team uh, phase. Obviously, they have all the talent in the world. And Abel's going to take out Spacely as he's in the corner. It was never an issue of talent with this team. Like, they always had the players. It just was not working anymore. Needed some fresh faces in there. They pick up Gunless. Find themselves down 1-0 in the series, but up 4-3 in rounds in map number two. I think Gunless just found his 10th as he pinched there with an able to close out the round. It was actually an able, sorry, that cleaned it up. Both of them getting involved. Three shots come in from Gunless and able with the final bullet. And that's back to back rounds for FaZe, and they now take control of this search and destroy. And uh, days it must win? I, I don't know. I mean, I, do I think that FaZe would be a team capable of uh, pulling off a reverse sweep? They've done some of the more historically famous reverse sweeps in the history of Call of Duty, but not a hole you want to put yourself in. Now we see it's going to be Ghost Gaming going from that top side again. So usually we see this maybe what, once from both teams in a throwback search. Now you're seeing it, or maybe later in the rounds, right, when time's starting to dwindle down. But two pushes. They probably liked what they saw the last time they got the bomb down at B. They just think, man, if we didn't get that team kill played a little bit better, we had a shot. Exactly, but you remember, FaZe flew like a flock and they were able to make a play. They get the entry kill yet again, make all the entry kills. Only man remaining is going to be Llama God. He does have FTL in a similar situation. He was stuck in last time, but just too much to do. This time, the opposite side of the silo. <laughs> and I like how FaZe plays out when uh, Ghost Gaming goes top side. So a lot of other teams, they'd kind of play a little bit slower as they're going through that back side of the map. Baze is like, screw it, let's not let them get all the way back to blue or get in that mid-cut and get lost. Let's just push it right away. Well, it, it, look, you allowed the early plan on this site last time uh, that Ghost was on offense. They get a four-man four retake and made it look easy. They don't adapt at all. They let them do it again. Say, hey, we're going to fly in together, trade effectively, and win the round. I, I don't think they're worried about their ability to retake on the B site whatsoever right now. Now to be phase one round away from taking game number two, tying the series up. It's gunless. He's streaked out. The bomb will go down. As long as he stays alive, he maybe use one of these streaks while he's dead. So he at least gets a plant, though. Yeah, at least gets a plant. This basically kills him right after he gets it done, but all the kills then going back their way. Attaching Zuma, though, instantly turn into a 2v2. Now going to be Zuma. He's going to be in a one versus one, trying to get away with his life. You don't have an angle if you're lace field. This is a huge 1v1. Can FaZe close it out here? A couple bullets already in the lace field, but not too weak. He challenges, hits some beautiful shots on Zuma. Zuma now has to back down. He's close in the corner. Clutch kill from lace field. They keep this game too alive. Originally, I hated lace field's positioning. I was like, why is he challenging that from sidewalk down to the bomb site? Like, you can barely see him. Didn't miss a bullet. <laughs> Didn't miss a bullet. Comes out, slides. An elite play there from lace field. And the, the angle of it helps him, right? And he's kind of looking down there on the bomb site. The cover not as uh, influential then for Attach, who's trying to play behind the bomb site. We know, we know it provides great cover, but as Havoc learned last weekend, not all cover is perfect. <laughs> oh, you had to bring that up again. Oh, God, that was one of the dirtier kills this year. I, I still, I watched that clip, and I still can't believe Wes can kill them that quick. Oh. That was, that was sick stuff. But all right, into round 10 now. Ghost trying to push us to around 11. But remember, Gunless, we're on with him because he has these streaks to work with. Now it looks to be the play call. Going to come in with the Trinity Rockets. Can he catch the Bomb Planter? The answer is yes. Already taken out Spacely. Now looking for more. Zuma connects with a streak as well. The streaks look to be what's going to close this game out. And some fabulous timing there for Gunless as he tacks on his 11th kill. Pick it up right where he left off in Search and Destroy, and that's going to be it. Phase, take the search and tie up the series at one to one. Yeah, one player on Ghost Gaming looks to the left, it would add Gunless, walks right out of the corner, Gunless shoots him in the back. They end up winning Search and Destroy. So the game mode that Ghost Gaming thought they had the advantage in, they lose. They thought they'd be outmatched in the hard point, they end up winning it.
will be phased, tying the series up at one game apiece, taking our search into short. That's a good shot from Gunless. You know, you, you don't have a, a great game one. Maybe shaking off a little nerves. First time here in the, the phase uniform and performing on the main stage right now for his new organization. We've got, uh, I, it looks like Spacely maybe reading notes. Yeah. That's uh, the new documentary he's writing, Life of a Gamer. Yeah, it seems like they have, you know, some you know, notes they've taken probably, you know, from all those VOD sessions. I, lo I love You it. would be surprised that not more teams do that, uh, you know. So, some of the other games you know I, I've done where you know, they have like full on like a coach who will come who has like a full binder just full of just composition setups what they've seen teams do positions they like to attack and whatnot it's I'm surprised you haven't seen that in Call of Duty yet I think as a uh, new blood continues to filter in as the prize pools get bigger and bigger I'm sure we're going to see more and more of the, the the long prep times go into these series these guys trying to get in to fight for the $500,000 stage two playoff Series tied 1-1. We'll be right back after this quick break. Before we head into the uplink with the series tied at one to one, let's take a look at our G Fuel key player matchup. On the one side for Phase, it's Enable, and for Ghost Gaming, Lamagat. Both of these players have been dominant for their team in uplink. Lamagat, that 1.17 uplink KD, 20 total points for Ghost Gaming. Look for him to play at his best if they're going to give Phase a good match because Enable has been insane. A 1.13 uplink KD, 17 carries, 43 total points. Enable doing it all to go with their fantastic haircuts. It's phenomenal statistics here for their uplink gameplay. Who's going to get the edge, though? That'll be your G Fuel key player matchup.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's week two of stage two of the CWL Global Pro League. And right now we've got ourselves a barn burner. Series tied up at one to one. This is a swing game. Who are you picking, Matt? Ooh, I, I, this is going to be tough. It'll be Frost Uplink coming up next. We were talking a little bit during the break. You know, this is a map where you could see Gunless really excel you know, with the E-Rad in his hands, really get further up on the map with Zuma and Attach, really cause a lot of problems for Ghost Gaming. Well, and uh, just I think historically for Call of Duty every single year, um, before players get a really uh, a good idea on timings, it's a lot more AR heavy. As the year gets going forward, more and more subs come into play and the game speeds up. It happens every single year. So you have to think when you have players like Gunless, Attach, Zuma, this is a map and mode in which they should be very, very good. Uh, I don't know if they will right away, but on paper, I, I think this should be one of, their, one of their better maps. Right away is the key there, I think. Uh, you know, this team obviously newly formed, you know, didn't have enough time to get it done before Anaheim. I think FaZe really just didn't know what they wanted to do. We United didn't really know what they wanted to do. It was a cluster. Yeah, it was, it was a mess. And then after uh, the Anaheim gets done, they, they figure out some stuff, put this roster together. There's still not enough, a lot of time to practice coming into this event. So, you know, Frost Uplink, it'll be interesting to see. I feel like if there's a game mode where teamwork can really kind of throw things off, it would be Uplink, where that's where I would be worried about from FaZe. But just the slaying power this team has over Ghost Gaming, it, it's just a lot. Well, Ghost has been uh, doing a lot of prep for these matches, watching VOD. They're going to need every bit of that here. They're going to know their opponents better, like you said, maybe have a little bit of a teamwork advantage. I, I know on phase you've got three players that have been playing together since what seems like 1998. But with this core roster, you got a little bit of an advantage maybe from Ghost in the sense that you've, you know, you had a lot of prep time for Anaheim. Well, well sorry, a lot of, what, two, three weeks. And now you, you have prep for, for uh, the Global Pro League. When you were a coach, what was your uh, you know, regimen with watching VODs in film? Uh, there was absolutely none, Matt. I, oh. I would eat Papa John's and I would try to get tipsy to not kill Burns. Oh, okay. Sounds like sounds like you contributed. Didn't they break up shortly after you became the coach? Yeah, I don't think I helped. No, yeah, it doesn't seem like you were very successful. But you I, did. You try to coach Moach. No. Yeah. Sorry, Moach. I love you, buddy. Moach was pretty good, though. He was. Oh, I'm kidding. You're great. Okay, opening 30 seconds here. It's pressure from Mox and company. They've got Drone in a Robo Bay. And they're trying to push through. You know, we saw in our first series between Enigma 6 and Elevate, they kept getting to this, but it kept being interceptions for Elevate. Stops there. This time, though, Ghost. They get one point on the board early in the, the first 45 seconds. Yeah, they just strong on their way in. Just picking up the kills inside Sub Bay. And on the other side, well, Gunless at one. Zuma with three. Enable with Drone in hand. Now let's see if they can turn into points. It'll be a one-point play there for FaZe, so they answer right back. And it works out nicely because you get the one point, you're able to get enabled in with gun up and at least find a kill. That, that basically slows any sort of counterattack that could come out of Ghost Gaming. Nice job keeping gun up and being a threat in the base. Now it's going to be a flank from Attach as he's going to try and get behind and research and Spacely decimates him. And now, uh, you know, I think if you're FaZe, it's great to see Zuma. You know, obviously he had these kind of surgery with his hands, see him getting playing better. Ghost Gaming making a good push here. As they go inside of the phase base. It'll be a two-point play, but I believe you were speaking to Enable a little bit about you know, how bad Zuma's injury was before he actually had kind of the surgery procedure done. I'll be honest. I, I didn't watch any YouTube videos on the matter. I just kind of saw tweets and you know, heard Tommy talk about it a little bit. I, di I didn't realize how significant it was. I don't know if anybody did, but you know, talking to Enable, it has really, really affected his gameplay, and he has very high hopes for the Zuma we're going to now see. A, a guy that, you know, was right up there as top players at the end of Go. Same could be said for Advanced Warfare. I mean, I, I think if you're a newer viewer, you haven't seen Zuma at close to his best. I mean, when he Not is playing, close, yeah, yeah he, he's in the conversation for best player in the game when he's playing his best. I mean, he is just has so much raw talent. If he come, if we get that back at this time of the year, oh God, I mean. He's been a fantastic player at every title we've casted or seen him in. Yep. You, you go back to Advanced Warfare, you know, Cod Champs time. You know, who are the two biggest free agents to pick up? It was Zuma and Saints. You know, Envy uh, with Merc is able to get those guys, not make anything good happen at Champs, but still, I mean, just uh, in the caliber of player that these guys are, you're definitely going to see the best out of Zuma going forward, I believe. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what you're really hoping for if you are a FaZe fan, but right now, FaZe lost the first respawn. They're trailing here in the second to Ghost. It's been a good job of a kind of drone possession control uh, so far for Ghost. A melee comes in. That was three down for FaZe. Mox is set up in the back of the base. Uh, this should absolutely be a dunk as long as they can get through. Mox needs to get back into a control position. 
Holds at the close corner, and that's another dunk. 5-1 advantage. Great start from Ghost. And here's the hardest part about a new team forming together an uplink. Like, you're not sure if you should wrap back, you know, who's going to... Because there's a lot of times where but you don't even have to communicate with your teammates. Where Attach comes off spawn, he knows where Clay is going, so he knows he doesn't have to pick that up. Now when you add another player or a newer player into the mix, they don't really know exactly what Gunless is thinking off a of spawn. So when they spawn up, their first thing is like, okay, where is he going? All right, now I'm figuring out where I have to go. Then the next person just kind of falls everybody down in line. It's very difficult to figure out. Yeah, and I think, you know, communication is obviously, it could be the single most important thing in the competitive esports, just the, the way the guys interact with each other. But it's even more important now for FaZe. You know, you've played together for so long with Clay in that mix. You kind of knew what your teammates were going to do, like you said. If you have off communication, it's not maybe the end of the world. Right now, though, it has to, it has to be perfect. It has to be flawless, otherwise they're going to be getting lost. And so much in Uplink is like kind of dynamic on where you spawn and where you should go and situational that some players also have different opinions on where to go in certain situations. And they assume, you know, that one player is going to go this way if I go that way. And I think when you add another player into the mix who you know, may have a different philosophy as the rest of the squad, changes things up so much. I'll tell you what, for Ghost, you know, Mox, who is a fantastic MV4 player, didn't have the best game one. He has exploded here in the first half of Frost Uplink. He's 18 and 10. How many times have we gone to Mox's POV and he's sitting there like near back helipad in the spawn of FaZe Clan? He has been tremendous, but now you'll finally get a dunk through for FaZe. That'll be the first. They get three down. Look at the mini map number two. That's going to be attached back to mid map. He's going to be able to pick up the drone. This is scary because you might be throwing away a really good half from FaZe in these final moments. This is going to be another dunk. It should be more points here for FaZe Clan. It's actually the drone gets passed up to oh. Gunless and it will what? not be more points. Llama God goes absolutely huge. Zuma working on streaks as well. Huh. Not sure if he's able to pick up a kill there at the end, but Llama just went big for Ghost. Oh, Saves oh, yeah. at least a two-point play from going through. They try to pass it to Gunless. Gunless uh, probably getting closer towards Camo. Unreal. Now has camo back. Unreal. I mean, that that is just massive. I mean, maybe a little bit of a misplay from FaZe, but incredible defense from Llama God. And the, the big difference is there, your lead all but evaporates in, what, a 30-second span if you don't get that stop? I mean, you're wiping the floor with everybody. You assume that one player is going to be pretty easily dealt with, but Llama God just goes big. He picks up two kills, and then before Zuma can kill him, he just, you know, picks up that drone, throws it off the side. Well, here we go into our second half, FaZe Clan. Right now, dealing with a four-point deficit. Who's going to strike first in our second side? It was a one-point from Ghost to kick things off. Let's hop over to Zuma, though. Uh, Zuma has a seven streak across halves. It's now up to eight. He's 25 off the bombardment. There it is. He's fully streaked out. That's actually nine kills in a row for him between both halves. He is just dominating right now. Those streaks could be very imperative in mounting this comeback. Ghost Gaming has an opportunity here, Clint. I know that he can go on the offensive, maybe force Zuma to use one of these streaks on defense, because that's how you want to bait these streaks out. You want to get Zuma to waste these streaks on the defensive end so they don't have them to just keep punishing you off of spawn on the offensive side of things. Well, he didn't need to, because Attach right. killed everybody on the outside wall run there to slow down the onslaught that was coming in from Ghost Gaming. We'll take a look now at the phase push as it continues to build. Nice gunfight win for Gunless, but unfortunately, Attach falls on the other side, and he drops as soon as he hits the edge. Now the two remaining players of phase just trying to hold mid-map. They're going to be in a bit of a stagger spawn now as they all fall like dominoes, and mid-map control should go to Ghost. He lay sealed with drone in hand. He's going to back up. Knows he doesn't have to do anything fancy here with the drone, and you know, maybe you can actually hold the drone in the back kind of play some clock and try and bait some streaks out. I like this. I mean, his teammates have position and control of sub bay. He wraps all the way around. That cooked a, what, solid 20, 30 seconds off the clock. And now you have an opportunity to make a hero play for a one-point toss. It's over. It's away. I think it was far right. But Lacefield still doing some damage. And he's at least, you know, he keeps phase in their back foot through that entire 45-second span. Keep, keeps them all the way in the back of their base. You know, almost gets that one-point throw to go in. It's a nice play there from Lacey. It wastes a lot of time in the route that he took with the drone, and it's a pretty good play there for yeah. Ghost Gaming. You don't get points out of it, but still, you waste a ton of time. Exactly. I mean, points aren't as crucial right now. It, it's all about the clock when you have a, a two-possession lead, and there's under three to play. Zuma does have overdrive and still the streaks to work with. Tagging up a couple players as he pushes through mid-map. Nobody there to back him up yet. Enable will be the next man up. A team kill does come through for Ghost. So no one really able to get set up and do anything with the drone, at least for now. Everybody coming back in off spawn. 
but Attach is so far pushed up, has no teammates in support, so you just keep kind of spawning in waves if you're FaZe Clan, right? Attach up there trying to get forward, doesn't pick up any kills. Now coming over towards that drone, you have like a four on two, four on three. You have one player from FaZe on the opposite side of the map. Just seems like they're really spread out right now. Well, they did just get three down for a moment, which allowed them to sort of push forward. The problem was Lacefield had the drone out here on Cliff, so they couldn't make any kind of play out of it. And just like that, everybody drops for FaZe Clan. Ghost, a chance to make a play. Camo, available for Mox. This should be a dunk unless somebody goes clutch for FaZe Clan. Can they stop it? Here we go. Camo out. Is there going to be attempted body block? Everybody dropping. The dunk is there. What a great team push there from Ghost Gaming. Now you have these streaks, but you haven't used them. You haven't gotten in position. It seems like Zuma trying to hold on to them. Maybe you use them on offense, but right now, Ghost Gaming, they have you pinned back. There's nothing you can do about it, so you're going to have to pop one of these streaks. Maybe try and just get the drone out of their hand, but Lacefield with another one-point miss here. So ah, look like a self pass just going off the pass. backboard there go <laughs> there he will turn that into two ghost they win the game one hard point they're dominating now in the uplink i don't know if there's anyone at home thinking maybe that game one was a fluke i think the resounding answer now is no and you just see it's just the teamwork and positioning of ghost gaming it's just too good for face clan right now i mean look at face in terms of like kills i mean you got Nozuma, 24-19, he was fully streaked out. Attach at 27-20. No Gunless, only negative one. Enable now, only negative one. You have, you know, Lacefield on the other side, and they're not playing the best, but still, just the positioning. From Ghost Gaming uh, has been superior. To be fair, though, this was a criticism of FaZe, even when they had Clay on the team. In Uplink, they do a good job of outslaying their opponents yeah, win, yeah. and not put up a lot of points on the board. And, and again, it still seems to be a recipe for disaster for this team. Man, with 30 seconds to go, Ghost Gaming. It's going to take a 2-0 lead here in this series against Space Clan. Trying to score a huge upset here on day number one. And you think about it, I mean, Ghost... Ah, I know this wasn't... FaZe doesn't come into this, maybe like Luminosi last week, in which, you know, we didn't think they were going to drop a single series. They, they were absolutely coming out on top. It's certainly a bit more contested for this, but I still think, I mean, Ghost, obviously, no, FaZe is their biggest competition here. Well, maybe maybe, maybe they think Enigma 6 is, for all I know, but this would be a, an absolutely massive win for them to kick off day one. Yeah, I would not sleep on Enigma 6 with Royalty. They've looked very strong since picking him up. Yeah. I, I think a, a loss, and this group is going to be very interesting. I think these three themes at the top, you know, Ghost Gaming, Phase and Enigma 6. Uh, I think you could make the argument they're this top three is as evenly as match as any we've had. And with how good Enigma 6 looked to kick off the day, uh, it might be a little bit worried if you're Phase Clan if you drop this series. And uh, Enigma 6 is definitely going to be a tough test and, for them as well. And I believe this is Phase's day where they play both Ghost Gaming and Enigma 6. I believe they play Enigma 6 at the end of the night. So Imagine you could come in and go 0 2, right? To start. Could have a pretty rough day. And it's, it's interesting because they're the only team, like only major team that makes a big change coming in. And I think the big thing is too, like we keep talking about, you know, the pressure on the team to perform when you're going to make a change as big as removing Clacer from the roster. It goes to all members and what worse to amplify that, or well, better to amplify that pressure than starting out 0-2 and not having really anything impressive to, to talk it, about yet. It, it, it's every map loss, you just, it's always there. I mean, I, I kind of brought up the, the Philly when we had Karma on the team, like, and we, that that way actually went up to get TK and Clay at that event. So, like, every map was just so intense. Like, there was just more on the line because you were playing to really kind of silence all the people out there who said, like, it was a bad idea and you should have kept with the same roster and you everyone wanted to prove, like, you know, they could do their new role and solidify the team. But I think it's a lot of pressure on FaZe right now. They're definitely feeling what we felt. Well, you heard from Clay. I know he did a YouTube video, kind of his thoughts on everything that went down. We actually had a chance to sit down with FaZe and talk about the addition of Gunless. Let's hear from their point of view. I knew I had to leave my team and then FaZe hit me up. I knew I was going to have to change like the way I play a bit. But for the most part, I knew that if I could get everything situated in phase, then we could be able to contend with the, the greats. Gunless is just a very talented player. He had his uh, breakout year this year in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, and he's just been a very aggressive submachine gun or like K-Bar submachine gun oriented player. But now that we have Pierce who just runs an E-Rad and a K-Bar and just plays really fast, could kind of compliment me a little bit because I felt like I never really had somebody to compliment, you know, like my fast gameplay. Gunless just brings consistency. You know, we've been every team that's a team right now. We've got countless top threes, but we can't get 
get over that hump to winning a championship. And we feel like bringing on Gunless, it's gonna help us out a lot in that aspect. Playing team scrims uh, was kind of just like, I jumped in and they knew exactly what I wanted to do. They were kind of just playing around to me. It went pretty well. Uh, the first day we practiced together, we played um, Optic and we were playing really, really well and the vibes were good and everybody was really into it. Uh, when I look at Pierce, I just see that young, just natural, really good gun skill. I can see him doing well in every game. You know, he gets a lot of flack for the jetpacker. You know, he came up in this game, but he's, his gun skill is just unmatched. He's really talented. He's always talking about Call of Duty. He loves Call of Duty, so that's always good. I'm glad he's on the team now. Yeah, I mean, I have really big shoes to fill of Glacier joining in. Like, He's brought in championships at this organization before this with this exact same team. Clay brought hype, leadership, kind of just a whole uh, diversity thing with him. I'm not going to get hyped after map one, map two, map three, map four. And I think they like kind of like that. Nobody's really getting like their hopes up. I'm not going to get hyped until the series is completely over. If I've won, if I've lost, I'm only going to get hyped after the last final map is done in the books. You know, we hear interesting things about hype. You know, there's some players where I think it, it, it certainly helps and you kind of get the adrenaline going. Everyone's, it, the energy's there, but it, it's not the same for everybody. So it's interesting yeah. to hear. Maybe they, maybe they didn't like necessarily Clay screaming after, uh, you know, a two piece. I don't know. It, it, I think it really depends on the player, but they're going to have to certainly adjust. Comms have to be very, very different from oh, Clay to Oh, without a doubt. I think it, it definitely takes a, like with what Clay does, like he is so hyped all the time. It takes like a special kind of, group or a group who's more accepting of it to really handle that. I think uh, I know FaZe, maybe they got tired of it. Personally, I love that type of stuff. I think it can only bring positive things to the team, like you know, just reinforcing those positive vibes on everybody, but teach their own. They, I, I definitely, if Ghost Gaming goes out and wins this series, I definitely want to speak to Spacely about this kind of notebook they keep looking at or you know, what they found, you know, if it helped. I, I think it's a thing that we're going to see more teams do as time goes on. Ghost Gaming's little black book, but you know, we talked about uh, Ghost wasn't great in hard point at Anaheim. Remember, the, the, their wins came under retaliation. So, can they beat FaZe on a map like Breakout, where FaZe historically has been solid throughout the year here? I think this is the, the biggest test of this series right now for Ghost. I remember we spoke to Mox in that little video piece, and he thought if they won one respawn, they were good, that their SD would carry them through the series. Well, they've lost the SD, they've won two respawns thus far. Can they take a third respawn to close the series out versus FaZe? That would be the biggest shock for me. Not that Ghost Gaming would win the series, but in the fashion that they did, in that winning the multiple respawn game modes. Well, right now, they're uh, enjoying a nice chunk of time here. The first hard point, part of that due to Mox, he's already got three kills in a row. He's, every single second currently in the game has gone his way as well, as he's been playing in and around the hard point, backing up when he needs to, hitting lasers cross map, and anyone pushing through loading. Finally, he gets flanked in from behind, but you enjoyed a really nice stretch there for Ghost Gaming. Let's take a look at Cell Block, though. Yeah, it's going to be Lacefield going all the way around that backside. It'll be FaZe getting inside the hard point first, but it looks like they have no idea he's back in this position. Lacefield with the opportunity to make a big play for his team. I saw, I think it was Enable looking out the back door for a moment, but the timing could not be better for Lace. He comes in, picks up one, though. Zuma going big inside of the hard point, able to hold on for his team. The timing may be a little bit off for Ghost. Don't get the perfect collapse that they wanted. And now it's FaZe's turn to answer back. And I tell you what, you know, they're going to get fortunate. They're going to be able to hold on the cell block, you would think, as Mox comes through, picks up three. Says one more player to beat inside of the hard point. But you remember back to Retaliation, they let Mox two or three times, you know, Cathedral and Broken, get in a fantastic position to all the way in the back and get set up. You cannot let teams do that to you consistently. Like, if you let, like, imagine if this is LG, and that's classic in the back that sneaks behind enemy lines. Th this is a break right away for LG, and they're up by a ton. That was so good, though, what we just saw from Mox over those final 45 seconds. The three kills to get in, yes, amazing as his team was flooding through. He's the last man up, but just the fact he played his life, he contested that entire time. That's a difference of, what, 20, 20, 30 points that could have gone the way of FaZe. And he's off to a fantastic start at 8-2, and two, working towards score streaks and also working towards his active camo, so Mox Doing a lot of nice things for Ghost Gaming here at the start. Gunless will get one. The rest of Ghost Gaming, they will oh. fall. Oh. Mox, still, man, the shots he's hitting with the NV4 right now. He's going to actually use the Trinity. See if he's able to get anything with it. Gets enable as he's trying to get out of cave. His teammates got to push, though. They got to get something for this. And now they're going to earn the bombardment as well. It's a nice start to this game here for Ghost Gaming. And you can see why, you know, people have been so hyped around Mox and what he's able to do. 
He's uh, one of those guys when he's on, doesn't miss bullets. You saw, saw some of the gunfights he was winning. He is able to get streaked out, but FaZe has done a good job picking up some time here and finding the kills. We might, it's gonna be very, what, just all but a tie game as we wrap out the commissary. Solid stuff getting back into it after a poor cell block for FaZe. Well, if you're FaZe, that's the best case scenario. You tie the game up and you force Ghost Gaming to waste one of their streaks. It's a pretty good hard point all in all for FaZe Clan. And now Ghost Gaming, how do they break in? They're gonna use some bombardment. They're gonna back FaZe up. It's attached in a tough position, can't get out of that hallway. Now he's gonna come out, there's players all around him. He's able to get one, somehow still alive, but it's gonna be two kills for Ghost Gaming. Enable trades it out quick though. And now Ghost Gaming, they burn through all the streaks, Maeve, and they have nothing to show for it. His face is held on to Commissary. They're gonna put a lot of time on the board. You literally have nothing whatsoever to show for the Trinity or the Bombardment. Every second after the streaks goes the way of FaZe Clan. And like you said, you bait him out early, that could be the difference if this is a tight game like in game one that ended up going down the stretch. Mox continuing though to, he might get another set of streaks. He keeps playing the way he has. 17 and six, nearly triple positive right now. On the other side though, Spacely, two and 10. Lama God, two and 10. Uh, it has been the, the Mox, the one man army so far. Lama God's definitely five and 11. Definitely five and 11. Two and 10 as well. Oh Give no, a I, little bit more credit than Oh, I thought I said two and 10 and five and 10. I don't know, I, uh, my, my brain shuts off sometimes. Your eyesight, you're not wearing your reading glasses today. I should get some probably. You probably need them now at the old age, but Ghost, they're still in this game. They're inside of the hard point, they're scoring points now. If they somehow win this with, you know, two players right now sitting at double negative, I mean, obviously you need them to pick it up if they're gonna come back and win this one, but would be pretty telling of what phase is right now. Uh, not if Mox gets another set of streaks and somehow gets two camos at a hard point. <laughs> I think he's a kill away from uh, it already. Well, ho hopefully, <laughs> after they use the streaks, they get more than two seconds on the next two hard points. Yeah, he, yeah. You, you would hope so. Uh, Gunless does win one of the backside of cell blocks, so FaZe and uh, Ghost going to be in a two versus two here. Four players bunched up around cell block to control the next set of spawns. Both gunfights go to Gunless. That's where you need him to go massive. He's got three kills in a row. There's still one player, I think it's Mox, that's set up in the back hangar. Is he going to be able to time the collapse? I think he was just spotted. They're trying to clear him out there. He's already won one gunfight. All the time going to Gunless, Mox will finally get picked up. So now you've got complete control here for FaZe. Yeah, Mox just needed to stay alive for a little bit longer. If he was able to do that, maybe you get a pinch going here on Cell Block, but it is all FaZe Clan. Inside of the Cell Block hardpoint, Gunless gonna poke out, put some damage down, and he's gonna back on out, trying to stay alive. Now he's gonna slide out. Has teammates in support here, though, coming as Ghost Gaming. Gonna contest this on the outside catwalk. Nice shots there from Enable. To be attached, able to kick, clean up some kills inside of the hill. And it should be FaZe able to take the last few seconds here, and they will. Ghost Gaming going to set up for the next hill over in Grave. Much better, better job by FaZe this time. I mean, last time we know Mox went massive for Ghost Gaming, able to contest a lot of the cell block. This time, it's all going to be FaZe Clan racking up a ton of time, and they've got a couple players triple negative right now. Remember when I said that Lama God had five kills? That was at the first hard point in the second rotation. Still has five kills. That's good. Uh, not ideal. Attaches five in a row right now. Yeah, basically with three. Uh, I know since that the uh, second half of the game started, it's been a really slow start. But even with that, they're only down 30 points. It's not a crazy, no deficit for this Ghost Gaming team to overcome right now. It's ap it's actually unreal. That is a 30 point game, and you've got two players worse are, than triple negative now. Uh, is this back to what we mentioned? This is a criticism of FaZe and Uplink this year, in Hardpoint last year, uh, when they would outslay their opponents, they didn't always turn it into victories, even though this year, even more so than last, I think you've seen the stats from JP. If you outslay your uh, the opponents and respawn, they basically are winning every single game. I think only one team won uh, in week one, and it was an Uplink. I mean, if you're out selling, you should be winning. There's no excuse to not. And if this game goes down to the wire and Ghost Gaming is able to make a bit of a comeback, Mox may earn a third camo. It's an opportunity to earn a third camo, potentially before Spacely Well, he's, he's working on his second now. He's working on his second. A second? Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, but still, second, still, second, getting, yeah. getting two would be Getting ridiculous. two would be insane as well, yeah. What's the most kills we've seen dropped on a breakout hardpoint? I mean, we see 50 uh, relatively frequently on something like throwback, but... <laughs> Right now, he's on pace to drop 40 plus. I, I know I haven't seen that many times on this map. No, especially with uh, somebody who's going to play a little bit slower with the NV4 in his hands and you know, a lot of pressure coming from the side of phase. And Ghost Gaming within 10 now. 
So Lacefield slides out of the hill. He's going to pick up one. There's one more player flying in. That's going to be Gunless. Has camo. Not going to use it here. Face trying to fight off to get control back at Commissary, and they do with 13 seconds left. But man, Ghost Gaming is still hung in this game. Lacefield picks up that kill. Probably the rest of the time goes the Ghost, and they're in the lead. Yeah, and it's just it's a question of whether a couple players will turn it around here. And suddenly you'll see the score, I think, reflect that. If Ghost is going to get back in advantage, three kills if, now go to Ghost Gaming. If Spacely and Llama were anything but double negative, Ghost Gaming is winning this yeah. game by a mile. Well, to be fair, at the same time, a lot of those kills are going to Mox. In his role, he's probably cleaning up a lot, a lot of assists, a lot of weak players. But Still. yeah, if they turn it around a little bit, I, I agree. This, they this were better shift. than a combined 21 and 42. Yeah. <laughs> But then it's it's funny they're they're negative twenty. <laughs> but then you have the game. And Mox Mox is almost getting near plus yeah. twenty. It's, he's plus thirteen. But yeah, Ghost now has taken over the lead. Can they win all three respawns off of Phase? Spacely gonna get gunned in top window. Enable picks up another one as well. There's twenty seconds remaining here at the central rooftop, and uh, neither team really racking up time. Phase finally getting back in, and they'll t retake control of the lead. For Ghost Gaming, it's can they get control of Cell Block? FaZe has won it every single time. Now they're sending two players on the rotation. It'll be Llama God and Spacely. Llama God gets picked up. Spacely, he's going to fall as well. Zuma putting down some nice shots with the K-Bar at range. And this is where FaZe can put the game away. They hold on to Cell Block here. Well, remember last time they got it came, it was Gunless got a two-piece to kind of set up for Cell Block. This time it's Zuma picking up two that are trying to push through the top side into Hangar. A big individual plays from FaZe Clan. Big part of, I don't even know how he gets a kill there. I don't know where the player was looking that he didn't put shots in him immediately, but Ghost does get the break. They're now set up, trailing by just over 20 points. This is their opportunity to retake the lead. Just under 30 seconds remaining here inside a cell block. It's Lacefield peeking through the window, trying to make plays. He's found an ERAD now. Can he go clutch for his team? Up over the top, teammates all winning their gunfights, and now that's an easy one for him. Mox going big as well, and it'll be, what, just around a tie game yet again? Maybe this a one-second lead for Ghost. This is insane. Mox, 35 and 19 right now, dominating this game. They're not even, the slain differential really isn't that big just because he's dropped so many kills. Such a sneaky play by Llama. He's just laying down right outside of the hill so the marker doesn't come up contested. Catches face completely off guard. Mox comes in, picks up two more. Mox is on a four streak right now. So he's going to call on the Scarab. Knows players are pushing. He's going to get a lot of them weak. And now Mox getting closer towards more streaks as Ghost Gaming is taking the lead. Even further, Mox close to double positive. 39 and 20 right now. Holy hell, are we going to see Ghost Gaming come out on top here? I mean, statistically, this has to be one of the best performances we've seen on Breakout Hardpoint. 39 and 20 is Mox. we got to get right on him, stick with his POV. He's been electric throughout this game. Attach, yeah, back behind that rock. But FaZe is picking up the time. Another lead change now comes in. FaZe back in control. But Mox still trying to pick off whoever he can. He's the only man here. He's challenging everything, but it's, it doesn't really matter. All the time going to FaZe is they've had control. The, the question is how quickly can they break through to Commissary? Because this those are hard points where you can wrap right from Grave, right to Commissary. FaZe going clutch when they need to. He's going to say, these first round of kills are huge, and the only one they get is Mox. Now Lacefield has to pop reactive, gets one. Able to pick up a second. Two huge kills from Lacefield. Llama God picks up one mid-map. Such a big play by Lacefield, keeping the game alive for Ghost Gaming. Lacefield, the only other guy really getting it done in the slaying category with Mox now going massive. Three in a row, spots a couple. The call out should come into his teammates that the pressure is coming through. Mox now back in the action, 244 to 240. Ghost looking to lock it down. Some nice bullets there from Mox. FaZe trying to push in. Ghost can win it here. This is going to be the last push. There's an FTL to get out of the way. Mox here to line him up. 250 to 244. Ghost gets it done. Behind one of the better individual performances that we've seen from Mox. What a bomb he just dropped on FaZe Clan. I wonder if that was written in Spacely's notebook. <laughs> like, all right, the strat on breakout is Mox drop plus 40, go double positive, and we'll end up winning the game. Incredible performance from Mox there. And it's Ghost Gaming beating FaZe 3-1, winning every single respawn game mode. A big shocker in our first time seeing this new FaZe roster on the main stage. Well, FaZe is going to be maybe developing a notebook of their own tonight, but uh, 
Ghost. Wow. I mean, we, we knew that they, they could take this series. You know, a, a, yep. a new phase roster coming in. This was very winnable for them, but I don't think we expected it in the fashion it happened. No, not a, not at all. And I think it definitely puts a lot of pressure on FaZe later in the day as they yeah. go up against Enigma 6, who looked incredible in our first game of the day against Elevate. Wow, what an uh, incredible, incredible performance from Mox and really just the guys in general. And, you know, maybe maybe some unselfish play, players baiting for him. You would see a couple times we were on with Spacely when they need to break something like Graveyard. No hesitation, sliding out, no Mox is looking over him. They were throwing their bodies out there for him to clean up the kills, but he did it. Yeah, we were joking, you know, obviously, you know, Spacely and I believe it was Llama, you know, did not have the best stats at the beginning of the game, but... Those guys play so selfless, like they're just going straight towards the hills, you know, doing all the objective stuff. The stats don't matter for those guys, it just matters about the Ws. Well, Spacely, the man with the notebook, they take it, and Jack's got him on stage. Wow, what a victory there for Ghost Gaming. An exclamation point for this team now in the CWL Global Pro League, taking all three respawns off of a very strong and new FaZe Clan team. I'm here with Spacely, one of the leaders of this squad. Spacely, before we get into that series, I want to talk about the notebook everyone keeps bringing up, the preparation you guys have made. Just give me a breakdown of what you guys did coming into this weekend. Honestly, all credit to that goes to the management of Ghost. They were really on us about being prepared, getting into film sessions. Some people might have seen the tweets that we were in their conference room going over VODs, and uh, it really paid off as we're prepared on all the teams here, and we're glad that we listened to them and did what we did. Absolutely, it seems like Ghost has been a great fit for you guys so far, but now this series, you come in, you take all three respawns off of FaZe Clan, you talk about the preparation, what, what, what were your goals? How do you take down FaZe? Because you just did it. Well, FaZe was actually the hardest team to prepare for because they didn't have much to watch. We kind of had to go to attach a stream and get only respawn that we could get prepared on them. And that paid off. Honestly, the S&D, only thing we couldn't prepare on, they took. But we knew the series was in good hands once we won the hard point because going into this event, we were really shaky at hard point. And that's what we worried about most. And it paid off that we were working on it hard because we, we came here and we won it. Most well, certainly, you look very strong in the game mode. One player who goes off is Mox in that final map. Yeah. One of the better individual performances we've seen. Spacely, for everybody at home, talk to me a little bit about your teammates. How do they support you? And realistically, just give me a little breakdown on what their role is on this team. Well, I, honestly, I got a great group of players with me. Um, as you've seen in that last series, if one of us has a bad game, someone will be there to pick us on up and get us through the map. And that's what Mox did right there. And that's the great thing about this roster. Everyone has the ability to go off when need be. And it just works out for us. Well, I believe we'll be seeing you guys up here on the main stage again soon. That is Spacely from Ghost as they take that series 3-1 to one over FaZe. For now, though, Benson and the boys on the analyst desk to break down that best of five. Thank you very much, Courage. Always great to hear from Spacely as well. A fantastic series for Ghost Gaming as they uh, kickstart their campaign here at week two with a win. Uh, but just kind of talking a little bit about Spacely, obviously something you mentioned, that, that, that boot camp Momo. It's clearly, clearly paid off for this squad. Yeah, I'm surprised uh, a lot of teams haven't done this previously, this whole entire year, really, uh, with obviously the, the things that teams have now, the funds and whatever it may be. But boot camping is something that people kind of look over and, and think, you know, is it really worth it to kind of look back on some VODs? And, you know, is it that critical? And I think from what obviously Spacely said there, it clearly does show. You know, he, he said the one thing we couldn't really research was the S&D. Uh, and looking at the Search and Destroy, it was a little bit of a, you know, up and down kind of series. But their respawn for me was a, a bit of a worry going into this because, you know, how, how good was their hard point going to be? And that was the bit I was concerned about, about Ghost Gaming. And, and it just kind of came on leaps and bounds. The one thing I will say is, have they got kind of a different game plan going into every single series here from who they've researched? I, I've just got to give credit where credit's due. Boot camp has worked. Uh, the boys put a lot of work in. And I'm really excited for the future of Ghost Gaming. Definitely am. Of course, we'll see them in action later on in the day. But we'll talk a, a little bit now about that series. Obviously, starting with that first hard point, 250-235. It does go in Ghost's favor. Obviously, we mentioned before the game work that you know, FaZe haven't really streamed too much. Obviously, attached here and there. But Gunless actually starting off with the MV4. It kind of surprises us all. Yeah, it surprised you a little bit, especially um, maybe not the first hill, right? Because sometimes you see three to four on this first hill, but he keeps it out for uh, oh, wow. at least the first half of the game, yeah. and then he pulls out a K bar. But that was sort of the question. You know, you have a Nabel who's going to use the MV4, but who's going to be the second one? I thought for sure it was probably going to be attached, but uh, obviously gunless. And at one point, they had three K bars out on, on retaliation, which we haven't seen in a long time. But just a great first game. I mean, FaZe had early control, but. Ghost Gaming, they just never sort of, they, there was never, they, they were always close, right? Yeah. They were always close to, to FaZe, and, and they were able to clutch up in the end. Even here, this is probably the largest lead for FaZe Clan, but 
again, Ghost did a great job rotating and get those kills and made it a game all the time. And, and to that point, you know, 71-71, the game was super close. It was tied up several times throughout Momo, but Ghost always just showed that they were, were never just going to roll over and die. No, I mean, Ghost Gaming is that kind of squad. Spacely said it, you know, when someone's having a bad game, someone will step it up. I don't think particularly anyone had a terrible game on the hard point. They were just all on the kind of the, the same playing field. One thing I will say, you know, Gunless ended up, you know, negative 10. I, it, <laughs> 0.58 when was the last time you saw that um he does step it up obviously later in the series but i, I can't go and not point that out and that that's for me a bit of a shock but kind of looking at that team is that maybe nerves obviously you're playing in, in one of the biggest organizations now in, in call of duty esports it's your first game on main stage like is that maybe something that he might have been feeling do you think uh it could have been a factor i think but he's been at the top level for you know quite a while now here in infinite warfare i think that's not something we should be talking about i think the teamwork from ghost gaming i really want to highlight these guys i had a brief you know time teaming with space mm -hmm. and he's definitely one of those players that will make those changes and you know force you as a team to realize what mistakes you're making and the fact that basically he's not going to usually be that guy that's picking up a lot of uh, slaying numbers but at the end of that hard point really clutched up got those streaks at the end that got them over towards bridge. He pops that Trinity at the right time. And it's really the fundamentals that were working so well for Ghost in the respawns that I feel like FaZe just didn't really know how to deal with. When you're making the game so difficult on a team aspect for the other team, which I feel like they were able to do on those respawns, you know, there's a lot of situations there where FaZe was out slaying, right. but it didn't matter. The teamwork was too good from Ghost. Very true, very true. Of course, Ghost take map number one, moving forward into the search and destroy. It was throwback. And this one, uh, again, was a little bit back and forth. Of course, it does go in FaZe Clan's favor, a 6-4 victory. Uh, Momo, Gunless, 9-3. and three. We, we talk a little bit about struggle map one. Well, map number two, he was right back on it. Yeah, he really was. And uh, that was kind of my worry. I went, okay, all right, I'll, I'll let you off of that because I think it ends up double digits at the end of it. Right. Uh, but a very, very strong start and a very, very strong finish. That's the important thing about Search and Destroy. You can go your first three rounds and drop six, seven kills but you've still got another three rounds to go, and he was consistent throughout. Um, a, a few moments that I will say were, again, I think Ghost Gaming could have maybe clutched up on, um, but throughout, I think FaZe were that better Search and Destroy squad, and I don't think it came down to those individual plays. They just played well as a team, and I, I'd like to think that's because of what they've been working on, the addition of Gunless, uh, but again, you know, this was a team after this map where I was thinking, okay, bit of a shocking start. Okay, good second map. How, how does this pan out? I, I still don't feel like we've seen the full phase yet. Yeah, and, and Ghost, they, they went B a lot. Something we don't see too often. I believe they had three sort of offensive rounds where they went B, but FaZe able to retake every single time. So a great job by the, them. Uh, Gunless, obviously 11 and four. And, and it's sort of one key notice, he's not running camo. Yes. Uh, the, and that's a change. I don't know if that's the right decision, right? Because Gunless, if you've been watching all year long, he's probably been the best camo player in the world, especially in Search and Destroy. He's obviously using it in Respawn, but Enable choosing to pick it over him in Search and Destroy, so... I don't know, it's just, it, just it, a weird decision. If right? you were on that team, would you would you give Gunless the camo in Search as well? Yes. <laughs> is, that, is, that the, is that the same down the board? I mean, I, I, I mean I'm with you on that. It just 100%. seems almost as if FaZe kind of want to keep a, a little bit of what was working for them, as opposed to maybe adapting to, to Gunless. I mean... I don't want to say Gunless is, is one of the best players in the world. You can probably make that argument. Oh, he right? is. But, yeah. All right, fair enough. You yeah. guys can say it. Um, is it strange, Teep, that FaZe aren't really just kind of saying, hey, we'll maybe adapt a little more and play around you as you come in? It seems they've basically said, hey, you're just going to do what Clay used to do. Yeah, it seems like they want to keep some of that uh, you know, old strategy intact as right. much as possible, but it's not like they had, you know, they had success doing it, don't get me wrong, but I feel like they need to try and make the new guy feel as comfortable as possible. Right. What they have been doing hasn't really got them to the, that elite level. And throughout the whole series, it just kind of seemed like the teamwork was a mess. It, it, you, you know, those four players on phase should really outclass the four on Ghost, but Ghost ob obviously prepared way more. The sure. team play overall, the game seemed a lot easier for all the players on Ghost, and that's why they come out with the win and look so darn impressive. I, I agree. I think comfort is the biggest thing for a, a new player, obviously, on a roster first of all yes he is one of the best players in the world uh, if he was on my team first of all I'd be you know I'd be like take whatever you want <laughs> uh, but of course it, you know in reality I'd be like you know keep the camo you've been fantastic with all year round you know how do you want to play on retail because I don't feel like he was comfortable with the way he started you know using the MV4 that's not what I expected he changed to a K-bar halfway through uh, and I think he did pick it up towards the end but I'd be almost kind of letting him do him and then changing maybe what was the other three and, uh, and I don't think that was maybe be thought out as, as well as it could have been but they may have had this conversation and, and, and of course Gunless yeah. may have gone you know what, i want to rock the mv4 i don't you know you can use the camo that's the stuff we don't see now that's that's exactly what i was going to say is maybe it was gunless's decision just yeah. you know what i i really don't want to run camo i don't like it in retail i like running the mv4 so 
Maybe that's just what he decided to do. You just never I, know. I guess. I don't know. True, I'd be amazed if Gunther said I don't like Camo. <laughs> After some of the plays we've seen him make, it definitely uh, it is. I don't know. It, it could be. You never you never know. Of course, you have to speak to the phase guys themselves and find that out. But moving forward in the series, of course, it's tied 1-1. We head over to Uplink on Frost. This one, 11-4. It finishes in Ghost's favor. Uh, and to be honest, Merc, it, it was 7-3 in favor of Ghost at the half. They just were in full control the entire time. Yeah, this is really where Mox started to step it up. Uh, I, I mean, some of the guys on his team didn't slay well. I, I think FaZe ended up out slaying, you know, Ghost Gaming and, and losing, in which we don't say a lot in Infinite Warfare, but Mox had a, had a great game. He had, you know, 30 kills, 1.3 KD on it. He was just playing great. But Ghost just in control, as you can see, 7-1 up right now. And, you know, Lace Fields, basically, they're negative. But it just seemed like... They are making all the right decisions, just making the game easier on them. As we said, just their teamwork seems to be very top notch. Yeah, every single time they had a chance to score points, they were able to do it on that first half. Mox, you're going to see this camo dunk coming in right there with a bunch of slaying going on. And you can see just how selfless a lot of the players on this team are. Lacefield not having the best game here, but really picks it up in the fourth map. Hard point. The fact that all four of them are willing to interchange roles at either time is just very impressive. And then FaZe, you know, they ha it's not like their uplink was you know, perfect to begin with before the yeah. roster change, even going back to stage one, there were several times where they were able to pick up so many kills, which you expect this roster to do, but they didn't really have anything coordinated after that. It's sort of kill first, drone second mentality. We've seen Optic kind of struggle with it earlier on in the year as well. So I, I think it's just a, a new roster syndrome sort of happening here. Some of those problems that were underlying before aren't really being dealt with properly here, and now they're finding them out at the kind of bad time. The so Worst time. Worst time. Really <laughs> asked to find out those issues. Yeah, and the one one thing that I kind of wanted to end on, we, we touched on it, they were negative six is kind of just a fact there, but Mox just having the best, you know, map three and map four that he could wish for. And and Space and Lace, they were kind of just going back and forward uh, and they weren't kind of having the best games, but like Teep said, Space is that type of player that as long as they're winning, that's fine. He was, what, double negative and standing at seven or one on the score. Like, you're not going to complain at that when, you, when your team is right. working so well. Uh, but again, I do want to just suggest, just say the two hard points or, or the one we've highlighted already, super, super close games. We've got a round yeah. 10, search and destroy. Uplink really was the only one which was, I would say, very one-sided. The slaying side actually went in phase by six. Very true, very true. Moving forward, of course, the uh, final map of the series, map number four, it was that hard point breakout. And as you said, a very, very close game, 250 mm. to 244. It does go in favor of Ghost, so they take the series three to one. Something I want to highlight, Mox finishes with 43 kills. That is the highest so far in stage two. Actually uh, beats out Scraps last week at 40, so he set himself a record. And, I mean, <laughs> talk about hard carrying the game, Merc. I mean, <laughs> the guy did absolutely everything. I, I feel like the rest of his team need to buy him dinner tonight. Yeah, I mean, 43 kills on breakout as well. Like, if you're winning breakout, it's like, even if 30 kills is impressive on breakout, just due to the pace of the game. But yeah, Mosh just obviously playing extremely well. Lacefield as well. In, in Lacefield, I feel like he was the other player going positive on his team, but he's also doing it with an ERAD, right? He's putting so much pressure on the map. But again, it just seems like phase, slaying is not their issue. It's right. not like somebody's playing horrible. It's just, it just seems like they're not playing the correct way, I, maybe. I, I'm just not sure. And, and to that point, it, it was interesting seeing a couple of players, I believe it was with Spacely and Lama, at 5 and 15, it, and the right. game was was 20 points to be. It shouldn't be that close. That clip we just saw from Mox over towards that cave hardpoint, as you see the end of the game there, that's just such impressive hard point. Mox was not throwing his life away in any sort of situation. I feel like any other player would just try to jump out and make some sort of hero play. Mox wasn't doing that. Always in a good situation to win gunfights. And then at the very end, Lacefield pops that reactive to pick up a double and then rotate around the back and pick up the anchor player, which was attached there. The game changing plays from those two players made that hard point winnable for them. Just impressive stuff. A hard carry for Mox though, for sure. Yeah, and just looking at that scoreboard, obviously, that I mean, the big story is 90 seconds uh, on that first hill to like eight, I believe it, it was. Just a great job by Ghost, and that just deals with teamwork. You know, that first hill is one you're going to get shot at a lot of the times, but looking at the series scores, obviously attached a player we didn't really touch on, but he had a, a pretty solid series, and then Mox, again, a, another player who, who was just a beast in this one. Yeah, one player that I do want to touch on with talks and given so much praise towards Ghost Gaming is Llama. Um, he was kind of... Yep. I became such a fan of Llama God at Anaheim. It was He was almost playing like Mox was in the last two games. I was like, what? You know, why is he playing so well? And I don't know what's changed. Um, obviously, something has dram dramatically. Obviously, Mox performing very well. Llama God was dropping ridiculous numbers at Anaheim. I hope we see that in day two and day three. I think he was one of the guys kind of players to watch, if you like, uh, coming into this day. Mm, very true. And I, I do want to ask the question now, if you were on phase team, 
what do you do right now? If you're on that squad, obviously you, you've come here in the groups, as we kind of touched on, worst possible time to find out some of the, the, the big mistakes that you have. How do you adapt to that as a player, as a team? Uh, it's really not much time to sort of bounce back, but I think the first thing you try and do is, personally, I'd go watch that VOD as, as fast as possible. Probably not able to do it right now, but just sort of in the talking ground, you know, like trying to figure out who's struggling, who feels uncomfortable. You got to figure that out right away. It's a new roster, and for the way some of the, they're, they're playing, that the game shouldn't be that close. You're out slaying, you're doing, you know, step one perfectly right. well. Something's not clicking along the line. Someone's not doing their job, or might not even know that they're not doing their job correctly. So I think they, they need to try and get that leader. Enable needs to step up and figure out who's not comfortable in a role and fix things right away. Especially considering last game of the day, E6 and E6 look damn good, let's, let, let's be honest. I mean, yeah. I, that game could be a struggle for FaZe, Merc. Uh, I, I'm, I mean, I'm kind of worried that we could see FaZe 0-2 at the end of day one. Yeah, and I mean, they, they lost all three respawns, right? That's the sort of the biggest you know thing to me is Enigma Six is a very strong respawn team. I mean, they win that search and destroy. It's it's going to be tough, but I feel like if the slaying is there, FaZe will figure it out. Uh, obviously, it was there in that Series 1. It's just those sort of little decisions they have to figure right. out. And we'll see. Maybe it's just as simple as role changes. We'll have to see. Well, we still have uh, plenty of time in the groups, but that day one start is all important. Of course, we saw uh, Evil Geniuses do it in stage one where they went 0-2 and then somehow managed to win their group. But uh, moving forward, we will talk a little bit about stage two tickets. They are still available. You can purchase yours at mlg.tv slash pro league. Of course, we're here June 30th to July 30th, but we are now halfway through day one of week two of the Call of Duty Global Pro League presented by the PlayStation 4, Enigma 6, and Ghost now both with big wins to start off the day 1-0. For Elevate and Phase, though, they sit at 0-1 and, and search for their first win. Up next on the main stage, Elevate go up against Ghost Gaming. We'll be back after this.